So we are on lesson three, um, which is all about negative exponents. And so what we're we're going to start by talking about zero exponents. And I think this is something that we've mentioned before in class. We haven't really spent a lot of time with. And since we're doing powers and exponents and everything else, I want to go ahead and touch on it now. Um, so zero exponents. So it doesn't have it doesn't count when this number is zero. It's only so for anything other than zero here anything to the zero power is always going to be one. Now why does that happen that way? Let's take a look at the scenario we learned in the last section when you are dividing monomials and you just subtract the exponents. When that happens you have x to the fifth over x to the fifth you do five minus five, right? So if you remember that meant we have five on top and we have five on the bottom. Well if I cancel those I'm left with a whole bunch of 1's, right? Because when something is over itself, it equals 1. Well, that's 5 minus 5, so that 0, this is all equal to 1, but all of this is all the same, so x to the 0 power is actually equal to 1. And so that's why that happens that way. All right, so make sure you have that rule down, as well as that example showing why, and then we're going to go over a rule for negative exponents. So let's take a look at how we work with negative exponents. Um, so if a is not equal to zero, and n is just some whole number, if we have a to the negative n, that equals one over a to the positive n. Okay? So, if we have some number, again, it's not zero, zero is, op is left out of these rules, and you have some exponent that's negative. What you do is you take the reciprocal of that. So if you guys remember when you multiply by the reciprocal when you're dividing fractions, you take the reciprocal. So for instance, why does this work? Well, if I have x to the third over x to the fifth, this really means x to the three minus five, which is x to the negative two. Well, what is that? If I write that out as x times x times x over 5x's, we can cancel out three of these, and we're still left with two on the bottom this time, which means we have 1 over x squared. So the x is equal to negative, or x to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over x squared. So negative exponents mean you simply move it to the bottom if it's on the top, and move it to the top if it's already on the bottom. So again, make sure you have this rule copied down. Pause the video if necessary. But now we're just going to take a look at some examples of how this works. All right. So write each expression using positive exponents. So for instance, if I have a is 2 to the negative 3, and then b we will make um, with a variable. So we'll have m to the negative 4th. Okay, so 2 to the negative 3 and m to the negative 4th. What we want to do, again, we're just gonna re we're just gonna switch it, right? So this is the same as saying 1. 1 over 2 to the positive 3. So you move it to the denominator and you drop the negative. Okay, because that negative takes care of moving it to the denominator. 
Same thing with the m. You put 1 over m to the positive fourth. So example number two, um, this time we're going to go the opposite direction. They want us to write them using negative exponents. Okay, so let's see if we can take it back the other direction and write it using negative exponents. So this one's pretty straightforward. It's 1 over 4 squared. So if I take it out of the denominator, it now makes it 4 to the negative 2 power. So it stays Everything stays the same about it except we move it back up top and we make this negative. So we're just going opposite of what we did over on this side. Here, what we want to do is we first have to start by writing it as something using exponents, right? Right now it's not using any exponents. So how can I rewrite 100 so that it uses an exponent? Well, we can rewrite that as 1 over 10 squared, right? We have 10 times 10 is 100, so by doing this, we say, oh, well, 100 is 10 squared. So now we can do the same thing and say that this is going to be 10 to the negative 2 power. So you can go both directions. You can take a negative exponent and make it positive, and you can take a positive exponent and make it negative. Now we're going to take a look so Let's take a look at when we evaluate something So we can, we're just going to say evaluate And the first one is going to be 4 a to the negative 5 when a is equal to a negative 2. And then we'll have a part b. We'll look at um, 6mn to the negative 4 when m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 3. Okay, So I'll do part A with you, and then I'm going to leave you to do part B, and we'll see how you do. So 4a to the negative fifth. An important thing to realize, this exponent only goes with the a. It does not belong with the 4. The 4 is separate. This exponent only belongs with the variable that it's attached to. Okay? So this is going to be 4 times negative 2 to the negative 5 power. Now a couple of things, a couple more things. There's a lot of little teeny tiny tendencies here, okay? So the 4, again, is not attached to the negative exponent. So when I want to rearrange and make this a positive exponent, the 4 stays on top because it's not negative, so we don't move it. It stays on top. The negative 2 goes to the bottom, and the 5 now becomes positive. Only the exponent changed from a negative to a positive. This is just a negative 2. It has nothing to do with whether it's on the top or whether it's on the bottom. So you don't change the actual value of the number. The only thing that changes when you move it to the bottom is the 5. Okay? So then, if we look at this, we have 4 over 
negative 2 to the fifth power. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, times negative 2 is a negative 8, times negative 2 is a positive 16, times a negative 2 is a negative 32. Well, we can reduce that and make it 1 over negative 8. So the evaluation there is 1 over negative 8. And again, if you remember, we talked about this in class where an odd exponent with a negative number will keep it negative. Okay? All right, take a moment. I'm going to leave this one to you guys to go ahead and try um, part B, and then I'll give you the answers and we'll see how you did. All right, if you need more time, um, go ahead and pause the video and give yourself more time. But when we substitute in, we have 6 times 4 times 3 to the negative fourth. Remember, only the 3 has the negative exponent. The other ones are unattached. So they stay on top. So we have 6 times 4 over 3 to the fourth power. Okay, so this is really the problem that we're solving here. So 6 times 4 is 24. 3 to the fourth is 81. Um, we can reduce that by 3. So this becomes 8 over 27. And I believe that is as far as that will go. So then your final answer there is 8 over 27. Alright, so that concludes this lesson on negative exponents. We will do additional practice when you come to class. And next time, we are going to be talking about scientific notation, which is a, an application of how we use positive and negative exponents.